Bibles, whatever type of Bible you're using, an electronic Bible, paper Bible, you have your notepad, your pencil, your paper, we're getting ready to jump into the Word of God, amen? Grab your stuff and turn to the book of Ephesians. Grab your stuff and turn to the book of Ephesians. After two weeks, we finally made it out of the first chapter. We're going to start here with chapter number two, Ephesians, chapter number two. Amen. Ephesians, chapter number two. Look at what it says in verse number one. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked, walked being lived, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, thus of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them too, we all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. That word wrath there can also be condemnation. Look at what else he says. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Look at this, listen, listen to what he says. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before him so that we would walk in them. I want to talk to you today about but God. Let's just, 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 that. just say, but God. Just, just tell yourself, but God. Is there somebody in the room with you? Tell them, but God. Let's jump into this. We have a little talk. So summertime is a time in which families from all over the world gather together for family reunions. They come from all over the world to mama's house, grandma's house, auntie's house, the park, the beach, the mountains. They come from all over the place. They go to heart just to have a little bit of fun, to fellowship, and to catch up on one another. And if you're like us, they always have some of those different people, those different characters that we begin to talk about in our families. Anybody got that grill master in your family? Anybody got that person that just jumps on the grill at every family reunion and they start cooking up something. They take them hot dogs and they throw those hot dogs on the grill. That chicken, those ribs. They throw that shrimp on the grill. They get that black pot and throw the fish in there and they cook up something. And everybody looks forward to the family reunion so they can get there and eat some of the food that that grill master has made. How about the cake lady? You got another cake lady in your family? That person that makes that cake that just melts in your mouth? 
on that red velvet cake or that chocolate cake, that pound cake. You, you got that person in your family that just cooks that cake so well, Shayla, that just does a great job of cooking it. Oh, how about this? You got that person in your family, you call him the drink guy. Because every time you have a reunion, he's going to show up about an hour late. So you can't give him anything good. You're going to give him the drinks. <laughs> you bring the drinks. And when they show up, they show up with some food line drinks, bilo drink, you know what I'm talking about? They show up with that drink. Y'all got that person in your family? Give a thumbs up if you got that person in your family. Or how about that guy who thinks they are a card shark? You got a tap in your family? And when you get there, they, they, they talking about how they're going to beat you in cards. They're going to want to Boston on you. They're going to want a 10 and 2 on you. If you're playing Big Wiz, they're going to do a 6, no, no trump, right? And they're always talking about how they're going to do all this stuff in cards. Anybody got one of those people in your family? Yeah, yeah. How about this? You, you got one of those people in your family that knows everything about your family history. I mean, they know who, who's married to who and who has whose kids, and, and, and they know all the cousins. They know how everybody is attached to the family. You want to know something about your family history, they, they go about three or four or five generations back, and they, they can tell you where folks are from, what they did, how they got connected to it. Anybody have one of those people in your family? And when, and, you got, and when you show up to the reunion, what they do? They had that big old poster board out, and they put it up, up against the wall somewhere, and they go up there to have you write your name on the board, and they have you write all that stuff. Y'all got one of those people in your family? Everybody needs one of them. Right, right, right. Well, eventually, as we're at this family reunion, we're at the beach, the beach, the mountains, or wherever we are, and we're having all this fun, and we're doing things, the conversation typically shifts to a moment of reminiscing. To where we say, do you remember when? Do you remember when we used to play all day long at grandma's house? Do you remember when we used to meet up at the ball field and play baseball all day long? Do you remember when we used to hang out at the swimming pool? Do you remember when we used to, used, used to play hopscotch and hide go seek over at Cousin Ella's house? If we find ourselves going down memory lane, remembering all those good times, all that fun we used to have. Anybody else find yourself doing that to family reunions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I believe, or I wonder, I should say, if that was the mindset of John Newton as he wrote the most famous gospel song of all time. Amazing grace. You see, John had a hard life. He was a guy who started off as a young man. He, he had his own boat. But as he's sailing, his boat gets captured, and they turn him into a seaman against his will. And after he spends several years on that boat, they end up selling him into slavery in Africa. He spends time there. And after, after his father sends somebody to find him, they finally catch up with him. He's on his way back, back home, back to Europe. And as he's on his way back, his ship begins to sink. There's this big storm taking place, and the tears are holding his ship. And he's crying out to God and crying out to God. And he has this but God moment. Because God allow things to move on the midst of that ship and it, and it filled that hole and they make it to shore. But then as he sits down, he says, amazing grace, how sweet a sound yes. that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, uh -huh. but now I'm found. Yes. And now I've been set free. I just wonder if he's flashing back, if he's reminiscing back to those times in which he was in bondage. All right. Those times in which he was on the boat and the boat was about to sink. He, he cried out to God and, and God saved the boat. 
I wonder if he's remembering that it was God who saved him. And it was God who has taken care of him. And it is God who has been there for him the entire time. I wonder if that's what's going through his mind. If it was not for the grace of God, I grace. would not be here. Amazing grace. Amazing. grace. And as we look at this text right here, Ephesians, the second chapter, verse number one, Paul is talking about, do you remember the time? Mm. Do you remember the time that you had your but God moment? Yeah. Let's go. Do you remember the time in which God stepped onto your scene uh -huh. and just turned your life inside out? Do you remember come on, come on. when you had your but God moment? Let's jump into it. Look at what he says here. Jump into it. Look at what it says. Ephesians, the second chapter. Look at verse number one. Look at what he says. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world world. Look at that first verse. And you were dead. dead. Now, by dead, he's talking about you are spiritually uh -huh. dead. Mm -hmm. You were disconnected from God, separated from God. And look at how he puts it. He says, not that you were dead to sin. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what he talked about in Romans, the sixth chapter. We talked about that on Easter. We're being dead to the power of sin in our lives as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. That sin no longer has power over us, but because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we now have power over sin. But that's not what Paul is talking about here. He says being dead in your sins. He's, he, he, he's saying that, that sin that, that's that has taken over your life has began to dominate your life. And no longer are you doing things along to your free will, but right. you have become enslaved to the sin. To the, sin. Okay. the sin has become your master. The sin is dominating things in your life. The sin is in control of your life. And as Jesus says, we can't have two masters. All right. We All have right. to make a choice. We're going to serve him or we're going to serve the other stuff. But we can't have two masters. Okay. So now as sin is in control, sin becomes our master and we become dead to God. And alive to our sin. And as we are dead to God, we are spiritually dead. My physical body may be alive, but spiritually, I am dead. Spiritually, I'm just going through the motions. Spiritually, I don't know who my father is. Spiritually, I'm disconnected from the God who created me. Spiritually, there's this hole on the inside of me. Spiritually, I'm showing up to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. But because I'm living in this sin, because this sin is still in control of my life, this sin is still dominating my life, I'm at church. I'm going through the motions, but I am spiritually dead. I am dead in my sins. Y'all watch that show, Walking Dead? Never saw a day in my life. I heard about it, but I heard about these zombies walking around. Walking around. They are alive, but they're dead. And that's how some of us are. We are physically alive, but spiritually dead. And Paul is saying the reason why we are spiritually dead is because we are dead in our sins. Our sins are in control. Our sins are dominating things. And he's just not talking about no one-time act. He's talking about it being over and over and over again. It has become a way of life. Yes, yes. Oh, glory. Because look at what it says. It says, in which you were formerly walking. 
That walking is just a metaphor for your lifestyle. Woo! He, he, he said, that's where you were at. Uh -huh. And you were just stuck right there in that sinful lifestyle. And that was you. Hungered down, comfortable with the sinful lifestyle. Comfortable with the lifestyle of trespasses. He says, that was you. Comfortable with that sin. And look at what he says. He says, let me tell you about it. Look at what he says. Look at what he says. Go back. He says, in which you were formerly walked according to the course of this world. In other words, the world was dictating to you. You, you was caught up in this worldly system. This worldly system that has us infatuated, that has us enamored, in love with power. Money, sex, uh -huh. and fame. To where we're always talking about what's good for us as individuals. And it's always about me as the individual. Not about my God, yeah. but I got to chase my paper. Come on now, Pastor. I got to get my promotion. Right? I need more power. I need more lights. I need more people to know who I am. I need to fulfill these sexual desires on the inside of me. That stuff begins to dominate. That stuff is in control. And we become dead to our sins. The world says, come here. Come here. Let me put this for you. Let me put this on TV. Make it look good. Let me make your life about becoming like LeBron James. Let me make your life about, about becoming like Beyonce. Let, let, let me sell everything I can with a woman that's scantily clad with clothing. <laughs> to, to where it's not about principles and morals and who God is, but it's about my pursuit of my fleshly desire. Of the worldly stuff. Of who is in control of that? The prince of the power of the air. Satan himself. Mm. He's the master puppeteer. He, he's just sitting there dangling temptation oh. after temptation after temptation in front of us. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah, he got you sitting down. This is what you like right here. Let me put it right here in front of you. Yeah. This is what you, you know you want that. Let me put that right there in front of you. Right Power, you know you want that. Fame, you know you want that. Sex, you know you want that. Money, you know you want that. And there's nothing wrong with any of that stuff if used appropriately. But what he tempts us to do is to use it inappropriately. Wow. He seeks to make it our God. The thing that dominates, the things that's in control of our lives. And Paul says, don't chase that. Yes. Don't live according to the worldly system. And don't let Satan have control. And number three, don't let your flesh have control. Your flesh wants to be separated from God. Your flesh wants to do what it wants to do, when it wants to do it, yes. how it wants to do it. Your flesh wants to be in control. Yes. Your flesh cries out at 2 o'clock in the morning. I want to do this. Your flesh says, I will do whatever it takes to get that promotion. Your flesh says, I'll do whatever it takes to climb up the ladder and be in charge. I'll apologize later. This is just the way of the world. Woo! You, you don't get ahead. Unless you do it according to the ways of the world. And as we do that, we find ourselves dead in our sins. Alive, walking around, but we are dead in our sins. We, we, we are separated from God. Alive to our sins. But spiritually, 
dead. So Paul says something else. Look at what he says in verse number three. He says, among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But Paul says, we too. He says, we Jews were just like you Gentiles. We used to chase after that stuff too. We were living according to our flesh as well. We, we were stuck in this worldly system as well. We were dead in our sins as well. We were spiritually dead as, as, as well. Paul is being transparent. Okay. You gotta understand where he's coming from. Paul is an apostle. As an apostle, he is the one who helped plant this church. He's the one who has been there for three years, sowing into this church. He's been teaching them the word of God over and over and over again. But you also got to understand the relationships between Jews and Gentiles. Jews look down upon Gentiles. They thought they were lower than them. Not worthy to be in their presence. Not worthy to come into their temple and to worship. So now you have this Jew who is leader, who is an apostle, telling these Gentiles, we've been through the same thing as well. We, we, we were disconnected as well. Yeah, we were faking the funk and making all y'all think we had it all together, but we had our issue with sin as well. We were dead in our sins just like you were dead in your sins. Yes. Listen, there's power in transparency. There is power in us being transparent with God. Transparent with others. There's power in us being real and being authentic. There's power with us saying, I'm not going to put, put this persona out there that makes it look like I have it all together, yes. all the time. Like I never do anything wrong. I always have the right answer. I'm always dotting the I's, crossing the T's. But there's power in us saying, I struggle too. I have fears also. Yes, yes. I wrestle with stuff also. There's power in us saying, I struggle with alcohol too. I struggle with pornography too. I struggle with drugs too. I struggle with financial issues too. I've been laid off. I've had a divorce. I've committed fornication. I've committed adultery. There's power in saying, I did this. But God. Why? Because there's power in other people's ability to be able to see the real you. As I grab a hold of the real you, it gives me hope. Now, as I look at myself and I look at you, I say, if God can do it for them, they can do it for me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. If, if, if God can do this great thing for me, if, if, if he can do the great thing for them, he can do the great thing for me. If he can do magnificent things for them, Shayla, yes. he can do magnificent things for me. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. That's good. Right. But as I look at them, it gives me hope. It gives me something to grab hold of. It gives me something to look forward to. 
that maybe God would step on my scene and God would do some great things on the inside of my life. God can do great things for me because he did great things for them. If he did it before, he'll do it. So Paul, Sheila, is being transparent. Yes. Amen. 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 And look at what he says. He says, just like you, yes. we were destined for wrath. Mm. We were destined to be condemned, to be sent down to hell. Just like you, just like you. we were in the same state. Yes. Yes, we were called the children of God. Yes, we were called his anointed ones. But the same thing. We were destined to hell because we were spiritually dead just like you. And look at what he says in verse number four. Look at what he says. He says, but God. <laughs> I just like that verse. I want to sit there and let that one Let's stick into your spirit. But God. Circle that, underline that, highlight that, whatever you do. And then when you get home on tonight, do a Google search or go to the Bible app and just do a but God search. You will see all the different things. He said, but, but God, God yes, yes. being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He says, but God, so just like you, we were dead in our sins. We were dead in our transgressions, but God, we were separated from him condemned on our way to hell but God. Anybody had a but God moment out there in your life? Anybody ever had a but God moment? Mm, yes. Good. You were lost in your sins. You were dead in your sins. You know that sin was in control of you. You kept trying to shake away from that sin and shake away from that sin and break away from that sin but you could not do it but you had a but God moment. Anybody have ever been out there been struggling with your finances and you had more bills going out and you had coming in and they talked about shutting off your stuff, coming to get your car, kicking you out your house, but God shall stop it. Yes. Have you ever had a moment where you were just sitting there and you were doing things and you were, you were trying to do things and all of a sudden God just stepped up on the scene you had a but God yes. moment? Yes. Have you, have you ever had that situation where you're in a relationship style and you was in this relationship and it felt like the relationship was just falling all apart and you had, you had more angst and yeah. anger and fussing and frustration than you had peace in the midst of relationship but all of a sudden you were getting ready to dial the number for the divorce but God have you ever had a wayward child doing what that child wanted to do when that child wanted to do it, how that child wanted to do it, it seemed like that child was destined to spend the rest of their lives in jail. But God, y'all know what I'm talking about out there? Yeah, Have you ever had a no, but God moment? Yeah, yeah. If you had a but God moment, give God a shout. Give God a hallelujah. Give God a glory. Lift up his name. Give him praise on this morning. Say, God. Yes. But God. Say, but God, but yes, God. seeing you thought you had me, hey, but God. God, trial you thought you had me, but God, but God. tribulation you thought you had me, but God, but bill God. collector you thought you had me, uh -huh. but God, Satan you thought you was going to tear up my relationship, but, but God. God, alcohol you thought you had beat me, but God, cancer you thought you had hey. beat me, but God, uh -huh. Every, anything even in your life that you've been going through, have you been there? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Have you ever had a... Yeah! Yeah! But God moment. Yeah. But God. But God. But 
They wrote you off. Oh, glory. But God. But God. They were down on you, but God. They were talking about you, but yeah, God. But God. Joseph has a but God moment. His brother sold him into slavery. Yes. He went through all different types of stuff. He's now the prime minister in this area. His brothers come up and they're seeking to apologize. He said, what you meant for evil. God. <laughs> But God but meant God. it for good. He had a but God, God moment, Danielle. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a but God moment. David is running around in the wilderness. Oh, glory. Running from Saul. And Saul was intent with his entire army to catch David and kill him. But God. Paul says that we were dead in our transgressions and our sins, but God. Ah, I like that. I like that. But God. But God. But Look at what God. he says. Look at what he says about but God. Jump down to verse number eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not as a result of work, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we will walk in them. Look at what he's saying now. He says, but God, who was rich in mercy, had an abundance of mercy, an unlimited supply unlimited. of mercy. And he loves us. Not when we have it all together, but it says he loved us when we're in the midst of our transgressions, yeah. in the midst of our mess, in the midst of our sinful state, in the midst of our spiritual death. He says he had mercy and love for us so much that he sent us grace. Amazing grace in the form of Jesus the Christ. He says, I love you, Nehemiah. So I'm offering you grace. I love you, Shayla. Yeah. So I'm offering you grace. I love you, Mama Joan. Yeah. So I'm offering you grace. I love you, Janice Standifer. So I'm offering you grace. I love you, Joyce Wright. Yeah. So I'm offering you grace. I love you, Hattie Hinton. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm offering you grace. I love you, Lynn Crawford. Yeah. So I'm offering you grace. I love you, Arlene. I love you, Carrie. So here goes grace. I don't want you to be spiritually dead. I want you to be connected to me. So here goes grace. Amazing grace. And all you have to do is by faith reach out and grab hold of the grace. <laughs> you see, our salvation has nothing to do with us. As it says right there in verse number eight, it's not of works. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. He want to give you a reason to brag. Yeah, that's good, Pastor. But it's all about his grace. Grace has saved us. Not because of our works. Not because we look so good. Act so good. Not because we have so much money. Not because our parents were saved. Our grandparents were saved. Our great-great-grandparents were saved. Not because our daddy is the pastor. It does not matter. It is by grace we have been saved. Yes. And when we reach out and grab hold of that gift that he has for us by our faith. 
Faith says, I surrender my will and I accept your grace. <laughs> Faith says, I'm tired of being spiritually dead. I want to be alive in you. So can y'all take some of that grace? Faith says, I'm tired of allowing this sin to beat me up. I know I need some help overcoming this sin. So I reach out in faith to grab hold of your grace. Woo! The amazing grace. Right, right, right. He says, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Look at what he says next. For we are his workmanship. We are his masterpiece. Let's think about that. That's what that word means. We are his masterpiece. In other words, we're his Picasso. His Wembrandt. Mm -hmm. We're his Edgar Allan Poe, the Raven. We're his, let's get in the sports. We're his Gale Sayers, his Steph Curry jump shot, his Barry Bonds, I gotta do it from the left side, his Barry Bonds swing. He says, We are his masterpiece. Jews, Gentiles coming together as the body of Christ. We are the masterpiece that God had planned before the beginning of time. Without an accident, we're his masterpiece. Can you hit yourself and say, I'm God's masterpiece? I'm God's masterpiece. Tell, tell yourself that I'm God's masterpiece. The next time fear tries to rise up on the inside of you, say, I'm God's masterpiece. Yes. The next time doubt rises up on the inside of you, say, I'm God's masterpiece. Yes. The next time depression tries to rise up on the inside of you, I'm God's masterpiece. Yes, the next are. time the haters begin to talk junk about you, say, I'm God's masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> Created in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Here it goes again. In him. In him. Not of myself. In Christ Jesus. And what Jesus did for us on the Cross. Yes. Look, at, say, look at the reason why. He says, for good works. Verse number 10. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. All right, all right. So the masterpiece has been created so that it can get busy. Not still on the sidelines. Oh, not sit in the pew. Mm -hmm. Not sit at home waiting on them, they, and the other people to get it done. Yes. Not making excuses. Lord. Says, you have been created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he has determined beforehand. Before you were born, it was determined. While you were in your mother's womb, it was already determined. The good works that he has for you have already been predestined. He says, just get busy. And for some of us, the work is the stuff that we, were that we have been delivered from. The stuff that we were dead in. Let me put it like that. Go back to verse 1. He says that we were dead in our trespasses and in our sins. That, that, that sin had become dominant. That sin was our master. That sin was in control. And it kept us disconnected from God. We were spiritually dead, right? Now jump down to verse number 4. But God, in his mercy and his love, has made a way for us. He's established grace for us. He's made, he's, he saved us. Right? So could it be that God wants you to go back to the sinful area wow. that had you mastered, that was dominating 
you that was dictating your life and grab somebody else and bring them up. Grab somebody else and say, let me tell you about my God. Let, let, let me tell you about what he did for me on the cross. Let me tell you about my Savior. Let me tell you about my Jesus. I was once lost in my sin, but God. I was struggling with the same thing you're struggling with, but God. I was addicted to drugs, but God. I was addicted to pornography, but God. I was addicted to alcohol, but God. I was selling my body, but God. I didn't believe in myself, but God. And maybe it's meant for you to go back and grab somebody else. Not sit at home and bask in the luxury of the grace and mercy that has been afforded to you. Not sit on the sideline eating popcorn, drinking Kool-Aid. But could it be it's time for you to go back? To reminisce a little bit. To do what I remember when. And go back. And get the next person. And build a relationship with them. And be transparent with them. All right. And show them that if God can do it for me. Oh, yes. He can do it for you. You can have a but God moment too. Could it be he just wants you to reach down. Reach down. Stop thinking about yourself. Uh-huh. Stop looking at what's going on in your life. Stop crying about the issues that you're going through. All right. And get busy showing somebody else how to have a but God moment. Could it be? For by grace you have been saved. That's good. Through faith. Um, Not a work now. Not a work. Why? Because he don't want you to boast. He don't want you talking all about what you did. But we have been made alive in Christ Jesus, seated in the heavenly places. The King James talks about you have been quickened in Christ Jesus. But we can't forget about verse 10. We quote verses 8 and 9 and forget about verse number 10. We are the masterpiece God wants to hold up and show the world this is the benefit of having a relationship with me. Look at what I did in Danielle's life. Look at what I did in Andre's life. Look at what I did in Herbert Wallace Aww. Jr.'s life. Yes. Look at what I did in Dexter's life. Look at what I did in Barbara's life. You think they got their own, their own. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. They didn't get their own, their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was by my grace and my mercy and my love they got there. They are my masterpiece. I molded them. I shaped them. God just wants to hold you up. Yes, he does. Say, look at here. Look at my Rembrandt. Look at my Steph Curry jump shot. Look at the masterpiece that I have created through my son, Jesus the Christ. But you may be saying, Pastor, I hear you. But if I was to be transparent right now, I'm still dead in my sins. Sin is still in control of my life. Sin is still dictating my life. If I was to be transparent, I'm still struggling with that same stuff. I've heard about God. I heard about Jesus. But the truth be told, 
That's where the extent of it goes. I've heard about it. I have not accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. For today is your day to accept Jesus as your Lord. The Bible says, if any man will come, let him come. And today is your day. Today is your day to say, I'm, I'm tired of allowing the sin to dominate my life. I want the free gift that Paul talks about. I want the gift of God in the form of Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. If that sounds like you, repeat after me. Father God, I am dead in my sins. My sins have been dominating my life. And to be frank, God, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of allowing the sins and the ways of the world to dictate my life to me. So on today, God, on today, God, I choose, I choose, God, to turn, yes, to turn from my sins, yes, and accept your Son, yes. Jesus the Christ, as my Lord and my Savior. I make the choice to choose Jesus. Jesus, name we pray. Amen.